On this week's Hardware Radar, we got some newsworthy stuff, some concerning stuff, and then we got Cooler Master, Cooler Master, Cooler Master, and even more Cooler Master. Starting off with a new proposal to standardize the way mini PCs and laptops are built, Intel, of all people, made a big community post describing how all of this could come together and make the whole thing more easily repairable with some standardized modules and whatnot. This is a proposal, if it's going to be taken seriously it just remains to be seen, but I really didn't expect this from Intel. I never thought Intel would like, give two craps about making things repairable or environmentally friendly. Followed by the second and last important news before we get to recent releases, Asus did a fuck up. Again, reports show that the Q release slim that Asus started to implement on their motherboards late last year isn't as convenient as everybody thought. As shown by Unico's, sorry if I butcher the name, Unico's hardware repeatedly removing and reinstalling a GPU using that upwards pulling motion without the use of a button may result in wear and tear on the PCIe connector. Regarding this, Asus issued a press release saying that everything is okay and we should just all chill about it. According to them, there should be no wear and tear if done according to the manual. And if there would be any abnormality or issues, Asus would take full responsibility, which is really funny coming from a company that managed to land in one warranty scandal after another. That said, I do believe that Asus is kind of right when they are saying that if you reinstall the same GPU into the same socket 60 times, of course there is going to be some damage. H have you ever screwed in a fan twice? The hole does not look the same. And I do kind of agree with that. Not to say that things should not be robust, but 60 times the same GPU, same socket is like kind of a lot. And now finally coming to Cooler Master. They just announced their brand new Master Liquid 360 Atmos Stealth, a all black non-LED version of the previous Master Liquid 360 Atmos AIO. Now featuring a crucial upgrade, an eco-friendly pump cover. Then we got something new from Oh, Cooler Master! Yeah, Cooler Master. There is going to be so much Cooler Master today. The Hyper 612 Apex is a 6 heat pipe dual tower cooler featuring two Mobius 120p fans and a kinda techy design, which frankly, I am happy that Cooler Master does have more than a single designer in house. I mean, last week's Cooler Master release was. Yeah. Anyway, the special sauce for this one is a overall size reduction of 30% compared to the previous models and such a big offset towards the left that the thing ends up being 100% RAM compatible, which is great. Good performing dual towers that aren't fighting with the RAM are like hard to come by nowadays. And another Cooler Master release. This time it's the highly acclaimed Sickle Flow Edge 120 fan. Though this is not like a new thing, it's just a triple pack rebundle and highly acclaimed was their wording, not mine. But yeah, now they come in a triple kit. And to finally finish off Cooler Master for today, we got a new redesigned Master Liquid Core 2. This time it's in 240 and 360 millimeters, a new redefined pump, whatever the hell that means, updated CPU compatibility for the latest sockets, probably Intel essentially, and the optimum tube length of 400 millimeters, which I highly disagree with. Design-wise, there is a big change on the pump cover, if that's a positive or a negative thing, I will leave up to you. And ignoring any potential changes that they did not mention in the specs, the fans seem like a side grade. They are now pushing slightly less air. They are louder, but they deliver minimally higher static pressure, which, okay. But AAOs are a package, and who knows, maybe this package does perform better than the last package. And everybody's currently favorite company comes out with a new microphone, with a broken stand. The new NTXT Capsule Elite is a weirdly looking rectangular microphone with rear-facing RGB and the first image on the article shows it in a like sidewise position on the stand, which just looks like broken in, in my eyes. To make things better, we can scroll down this page filled with buzzwords without giving us any sort of spec sheet-like information and click on this link, which triggers the automatic browser protection, which is somehow now linked to MetaMask. I, I, I don't know what happened here, and I really don't care. And I think this is because some genius typed in HTTPS twice into the link. Anyway, the Capsule Elite goes for 90 USD or 100 euros and comes in black and white. 
let's be glad that they just didn't call this like player one two and be quite sidekick silence is back with another cooler this time it's the dual tower dual fan six heat pipe xc091 m806 d to Okay, let's try again. XC091M806D.B or just Cryon. Thank God they are starting to give these coolers some real names instead of like barcode numbers. Right now there is no information about when this is coming or anything about the price, but knowing silence this one should be somewhat budget friendly. And back to Asus, this time with something positive. The new ROG Swift OLED 27 inch 4K monitor. 4th generation QD OLED panel, 240Hz, USB-C with power delivery, DisplayPort 2.1a and NVIDIA G-Sync. So basically everything you could wish for in a monitor with a cryptic product number. And the only listing I found was for 1200 euros. So no, I'm, I'm fine. Last week Fantex released the Evolve X2, never to be mistaken with the original Evolve because they look like nothing alike. Except for the glass back panel, Fantex still aggressively forces you to do somewhat decent cable management and don't overstuff things. You can see it. There is glass everywhere. The new X2 exists in black and white, comes with a very unique look. Glass all around, a brushed aluminum block for the fans, bottom to top airflow path, looks very exciting to say the least. And there are already videos out for that one, so if you're interested, just go check them out. And this was pretty much it for this week's releases. If I missed anything or you want a company to be added to the radar, just tell me down below. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get a bunch of sessions. Because as I was writing the part about the Asus Q Slim thing, I found out that regular PCIe slots have 50 mating cycles before stuff degrades. Where, first off, mating cycles is a terrible way of describing sticking something into something else. But also like my poor motherboards. I'm, I'm using the same motherboards over and over again. Anyway, thank you for watching. And if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the whole Elgato prompter universe thing that we did like a few weeks ago. For once, there is something from Corsair where I had nothing negative to, to add. So uh, yeah, there's that. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.